Hi, this is the Common Sense Professor, and I recently made a video telling the difference between engineering technology and engineering that I've had a lot of people ask me questions about. In the process, I've had someone ask me what it takes to become a professor. And so I thought I'd just take a moment with this video and explain this in greater detail because there's a lot to this and there's a lot of different options for you. Let me first say that becoming a professor is not always what you think it is. So there are benefits, but it's not very easy. And let me explain that. So first off, advantage is you do have a lot of flexibility as a professor, and I will admit that. Now, generally one of the trade-offs for this flexibility is your pay. So I've been teaching higher education since 2008. And during that time, when I first left industry, I took about a 40% pay cut. Uh, so currently I work full-time as a professor, but I also do about two or three things on the side too to earn extra money. Now that is another advantage of being a professor is that you do have more opportunities to do a side hustle. And so that's really good. Generally, you think if you want to become a professor that you have to have a PhD or doctorate uh, in the area that you'll be teaching. And for the most part, this is true. But let's first look at four-year universities and what it takes to become a professor at a four-year university. So there are different types of four-year universities. I currently work at a state university that is called a comprehensive university, which means there are some research involved, but there's also programs where you just focus on teaching. Uh, generally, this type of universities are smaller to mid-range universities, and so the university I teach at has around 10,000 students, so it's pretty good size. Um, but you're not as expected to do quite as much research. And so that brings us to the next type of university, which is a, which is a research one university or a research university. But a large part of the job is bringing in money with grants and doing research. Uh, if you go to a larger research university as a student, you'll notice that a lot of times you'll have a student who's doing their master's degree uh, that will come in and actually teach a lot of your classes. And that's the reason why is because uh, if you're a professor, you've got to focus a lot on your research and bringing money in because a lot of times your tenure and promotion depends upon that. And so that's kind of the difference between the, the different types of universities. And then you'll have a liberal arts university, which generally is your smaller private type universities. And these really focus mostly on teaching. There's not a lot of research done at a liberal arts university. Now, I don't want to say there's no research done because there is, uh, that's just not their main focus. And so their main focus is being a teaching university. Now I'll mention the three types of universities because generally if you're going to work at a research one university, almost always you have to have a PhD because uh, in order to, to do this high levels of research, you have to understand how to do research, which is what you generally learn in your PhD. Now at a comprehensive university like I teach at, generally they require a PhD as well. There, there's some variance here, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but a lot of times you don't have to have a PhD to teach because your focus isn't always on research but you'll have to have a PhD in order to uh, get put on the tenure or promotion tracks. Now let's talk more specifically about tenure versus a non-tenure position. At a comprehensive university, and actually in every one of these universities, you'll have a position called an instructor, but that is a non-tenure track teaching position or non-tenured professor position. In these roles, some universities will have different levels of promotion within a non-tenure track. Some do not. My university actually has one level that you can go to, but a lot of times people don't get that. So we have a lecturer position and a senior lecturer position uh, for promotion and that's it. But generally people do not go to that senior lecturer route. Now, what does it mean not to be tenured uh, is that risky? Well, it can be. My experience is, is that if you're in a strong program and you have really good student evaluations, that they will hang on to you. But I will say if there's a budget cut or uh, something like that, generally it's these positions that are first to go. Now at my university, I can tell you several people that retired as lecturers. Uh, they were there for years. Um, and it was pretty secure. And I started out as a lecturer. So I was a lecturer in my university for about three to four years. And I really wasn't worried about losing my job. 
because I was in a strong program and I had really good student evaluations. Matter of fact, I ended up being the program coordinator before I was put on tenure and promotion track. So I was actually a lecturer position in a leadership role. And so that's another possibility as well. In these lecturer instructor positions, a lot of times you only have to have a master's degree. Now what universities do is they have to go by their accrediting agency. And I'm gonna make another video explaining this, uh, how different universities uh, have different accrediting agencies and what that means to you. But right now I just understand that almost every university is accredited and in order to be accredited, you have to follow certain guidelines. So the accredited agency for my university is called SACS. And SACS states that if you're going to teach in a bachelor level program, that you have to have at least um, 18 hours in the master's level directly associated with the programs that you're going to be teaching. Um, that doesn't mean you have to have a master's degree. Uh, but it means that you have to have at least 18 hours in the master's program in order to teach, in order to, um, to satisfy their credentials. Now, generally, in a lecturer's position, the university will require a master's degree, uh, but uh, you do not have to have that for accreditation. So this is where sometimes if you have a graduate assistant that's going through a graduate program, that decides to teach, the university actually has that option after they take 18 hours in the program that they can actually teach as a lecturer in the position uh, as a full-time lecturer with benefits. So that's one area. Uh, now, as far as tenured goes, uh, generally whenever, uh, if you want to get put on the tenured and promotion track, which is anytime you see an assistant professor, that is generally somebody who is on a tenure track because that's usually the first step uh, in tenure promotion is assistant professor. Then you move up to associate professor, uh, which is generally a tenured position. And so whenever you go to, through tenure promotion, once you get promoted, you become an associate professor and you become tenured. That's, I just went through that. So I just got my tenured um, contract and uh, just went from assistant professor to associate professor. And the next step is a uh, full professor. So generally, uh, again, you have to prove yourself and prove your worth to the university. And this can come in, uh, as I mentioned, peer reviewed articles, published articles, um, proceedings, which are presentations. They'll have their own little journals that they'll have. So you can have articles in those proceedings, um, different types of publications. So sometimes uh, books, textbooks, things like that will count and grants. Those are generally what they look at. Now, universities, again, are different. Some will look at different qualifications for this, but that is the general overview for that. Okay, so again, you generally have to have a PhD in order to be put on ten tenure promotion. I'm in an area in engineering technology where there's only one PhD in the United States that's in engineering technology. And there are a few programs like this where you don't don't have to have a PhD to be put on tenured and promotion. They're rare, uh, but some of these programs are uh, architecture, social work, library science, some art degrees. So in a lot of a lot of ways the, the master's in fine arts is considered the terminal degree. A master's in architecture is considered a terminal degree. In some cases, a master's in social work, and then in some cases, a master's in engineering technology, because again, there's only one PhD in engineering technology. So that's kind of the general overview of, of universities. Now, again, different universities have different criteria, but this gives you a good idea of the what it takes to become a professor at a university. Now, there are other options, and that's a community college. And believe it or not, with a community college, you can become a professor in certain areas or certain programs with just an associate degree. I know it's hard to believe, and I still have a hard time understanding the, the reasoning behind that. Uh, give an example. Again, I was chair and there was a few programs in, in our department where you only had to have an associate degree. Now remember, community college generally stops at years one and two. So they stop at associate degrees. This is a general statement. Some community colleges actually offer bachelor's degrees now, 
But um, overall, you're going to have community colleges that focus on associate degrees and certificates. Um, and a lot of times they'll do um, some trade type programs uh, like heating and cooling, HVAC, for instance. And that's an area where you only have to have an associate degree for that. So I was the chair of applied technology at my community college uh, when I left there. Now applied technology is usually um, industrial maintenance programs, uh, engineering technology, two-year engineering technology programs, um, HVAC programs, welding, machine tool, those type programs. Whenever you're in an applied technology, the accrediting agency, which is the same as a university, states that if you are in a program that doesn't directly transfer to university, that you only have to have an associate degree in that field. Again, that just blows my mind, but that's true. So it is very possible that if you have experience and with an associate degree that you could become a professor at a community college. Now, a lot of times pay is not that different at some community colleges and universities. Now, some there are some larger research universities, professors make more money, um, but still there were people that I worked with at my local community college, which was a regional small community college that were making around $100,000 salary a year on a 10 month contract. You know, they've been there for many years. That's not common. Generally, you can expect salaries at the community college level between, um, depending on your major, it could go as low as in the 30,000s, truthfully, up to 60 to 70,000 on average. Okay, now these are usually uh, 10 month contracts, non 10 month contracts, but uh, a lot of times community college faculty will teach year round because of the nature of a community college and that allows them to make more money. Um, so there's not as much flexibility with the community college. Uh, you will teach more classes at a university. Uh, you can generally expect to teach three to four classes. A lot of times at a community college, you can get your doctorate, um, but most faculty members, at least at the community college I taught at, had, had, taught at, had master's degrees. Now, if you're gonna teach in a field that is transferable, so a math field, English, uh, social studies, anything to do with general education requirements, that, that'll take you back to the same requirement as a bachelor's degree, where you have to have 18 hours uh, in the master's degree program that you'll be teaching at in order to be able to be considered employable in that area. Now, another option is an adjunct. Um, and a lot of people do this as a side gig, and it is a way to kind of get your foot in the door. With an adjunct, you just have to have the minimum qualifications. So gener generally, they're looking for somebody uh, with a, at least a master's degree, and your pay is gonna vary greatly depending on the university that you're teaching. So I actually teach on the side as an adjunct for another university, and I get paid very well for that. Uh, their pay skills is better than, than some universities are. Uh, but I've also done an adjunct teaching for a community college and made like, I think it was $1,500 for a three hour class to teach during the summer. Uh, you figure that up, think about how many classes that you would have to teach to be able to make a decent salary. Uh, the university that I, I teach at now, you can expect to make around anywhere from three to $4,000 as an adjunct for a three to four hour class. So it just gives you an idea of some way that you could possibly make some extra money, but you do have to have the minimum qualifications in order to be an adjunct. Again, uh, I left industry back in 2008, and uh, the reason I left was to spend more time with my family. I took a large pay cut, but just my experience, I haven't regretted it one day. I love working with students. When they graduate, they get this awesome job and it just changes their world. Um, I love that. And, and also I love transferring knowledge that I've had in, in my industry uh, to my students. And so uh, I love what I do. I highly suggest it, but it's not easy. When, when I first looked into becoming a professor, I thought it was going to be uh, this gravy train where I just showed up to class and taught some few things and then I get off most of the year. Uh, it is true, it's way more flexible, but you're always doing something uh, during your time off. So anyway, again, I hope this has helped. If it has, uh, please subscribe. And as my other video, if you have questions concerning this, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can go back, look at my other videos. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And um, I hope you all have a great day.